Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to episode 105 of the Xbox and Zen podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all earn an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe in your favor and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles that you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big game out last week was Biomutant, and the games coming out this week include Operation Tango, DreamWorks Spirit Lucky's Big Adventure, Stonefly, Necromunda Hired Gun, Ghost and Goblins Resurrection, Super Animal Royale, Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunt, Bunny Factory, Astalon Tears of the Earth, Open Country, Tour de France 2021, Wasteland 3 The Battle of Steeltown, Talisman Digital Edition, The Last Kids on Earth and the Staff of Doom, Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2, Alphadia Genesis 2, Off and On Again, Astro Aqua Quitty, Griftlands, and Mighty Goose. New games with cold for June 2021 have been announced, and it's yet another dud month. A bill from June 1st to the 30th, you can play King's Bird on Xbox One. Shadows Awakening from June 16th to July 15th on Xbox One. Neo Geo Battle Coliseum on Xbox 360, available from June 1st to the 15th. And Injustice Gods Among Us, available from June 16th to the 30th on Xbox 360. Now onto last week's biggest news stories, and we have seven to cover this week. Number one, join us Sunday, June 13th for the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. Aaron Greenberg, General Manager of Xbox Games Marketing at the Xbox Wire, writes, Today we are thrilled to announce the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, which will stream on Sunday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time or 1 p.m. Eastern. The show will be focused on games from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and many game creators from our partners around the world. You told us how excited you were about welcoming Bethesda into the Xbox family, so we know we're going to want a front row seat to the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, a 90-minute show packed with everything you want to know about the epic gaming lineup coming out of this partnership. Incredible games coming to Xbox this holiday, upcoming releases on Xbox Game Pass, and more. You'll be able to watch the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase in a variety of ways. Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. We miss being able to see our fans and celebrate in person, so we'll be hosting a digital Xbox FanFest this year. Sign up as an Xbox FanFest fan at xbox.com fanfest to learn more. Marking calendars for June 13th, 10 a.m. Pacific. We'll see you there. Hype levels are through the roof. I cannot believe that E3 has snuck up on us this quickly. It's only a few short weeks away, and I can't wait to post up on Sunday and watch the showcase. Number two, Dying Light 2 has a release date and a brand new name. Sam Leverage at Games Radar writes, A brand new Dying Light 2 release date has been revealed during a Techland live stream, along with a fresh title, Dying Light 2 Stay Human. Techland has now confirmed that Dying Light 2 Stay Human will launch on PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, PC, PS4, and Xbox One on December 7th, 2021. The new date comes after the game was delayed last year without the confirmation of any new release window. It was originally destined for a spring 2020 release, but Techland needed more time to fulfill their vision. However, we now know that we'll be diving into the zombie-filled world of the city before the end of the year. For this game, you'll are exploring the city, which is mankind's last stronghold in a world gripped by a virus. You'll use enhanced parkour abilities just like the original game to explore its open world with a focus on crafting and tactful combat. But Dying Light 2 Stay Human will also force you to make big choices that will impact the world and the events that happen within. Dying Light was a game on paper I should have loved, and I tried it out for about 5 hours, but for some reason just didn't get hooked when I tried it once long, long ago. I'd be excited to see this come to Game Pass and me give it another shot, before the sequel coming up this year. Number 3. Sonic Central Stream. Everything announced, including a brand new Sonic game. Joe Scrubbles at IGN writes, Today's Sonic Central Stream has revealed a number of new projects featuring the world premiere Blue Hedgehog all designed to tie into the 30th anniversary celebrations. 1. New game announced from the Sonic team. Sega announced that its Sonic team, which has previously released Sonic Generations and Sonic Forces, has begun work on a new mainline Sonic game. A teaser trailer revealed that the game will arrive in 2022 for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. No other information was revealed, but the teaser shows Sonic picking up speed in a forest setting, which seems to cause digital effects around him before his trailer leaves him behind what looks like a runic symbol. 2. Sonic Colors Ultimate Revealed Sonic Colors Ultimate is a remaster of the 2010 platform which will come to PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC through Epic Game Store on September 7th. Developed by Blind Squirrel Entertainment, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, the remaster will update the game's look and feel as well as add new features in a new mode called Rival Rush. 3. Sonic Origins Compilation Announced Sega also announced Sonic Origins, a compilation of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, Sonic 3 and & Knuckles, and Sonic CD. No release date has been announced for the collection. 
Along with those game announcements, there are some more multimedia announcements that we won't get into on the show, but check it out if you're a Sonic fan. I myself am not. I did like Sonic Adventure 2 Battle back when I was a young dumb kid, but going back to the game, it just doesn't hold up. Don't really understand the Sonic games, but for those that enjoy, have fun at it this year. Number 4. Borderlands 3 is getting crossplay support, but not on PlayStation. Tom Warren at The Verge writes, Borderlands 3 is set to get crossplay support soon, but not on Sony's PlayStation consoles. Gearbox, the developer of Borderlands 3, has revealed it was ready to enable, quote, full crossplay support across all platforms, end quote, but that publisher 2K Games required it to be removed from PlayStation consoles. Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford revealed the details in a Twitter post today, noting, quote, we've been required by the publisher to remove crossplay support for the PlayStation consoles, end quote, to pass certification. It's not immediately clear why 2K Games has asked Gearbox to remove PlayStation crossplay or whether it's related to Sony's general disdain for crossplay. We reached out to both Gearbox and 2K Games to comment on the situation. While this is good for Xbox and PC players, you obviously want to get your friends on board who play on PlayStation consoles, the dominant console in the market right now. Just another bad look for Sony not going into the crossplay market. Number 5. Bungie's next project is seemingly a character-focused multiplayer game. Matt Perslow at IGN writes, Bungie's new project is a multiplayer action game that could have a character focus. A new job position advertisement shows that Bungie is looking to recruit a contract incubation sandbox designer to design combat systems for the studio's new game. Quote, Bungie is seeking a gameplay combat designer to contribute to a multiplayer action game currently in incubation, end quote, the advert explains. This line makes it clear that whatever Bungie's next game is, it's a multiplayer game or has a multiplayer mode. And that comes of no surprise considering the developer's legacy of Halo and Destiny games, but a request in the required skills section of the advertisement could narrow down what the new game is. Quote, experience working on character-focused action games is required, end quote. While this is not confirmation that Bungie's next game is a hero shooter, it does point to the fact that the studio deems it necessary that those working on the new project have an understanding of games that are character-led. Of course, this could point to a number of different avenues. League of Legends is a character-focused action game, as well as something like Devil May Cry. It's tempting to imagine that a new Bungie game would be an FPS, but action could point to many different gameplay styles. But considering that this development experience is required for a multiplayer game, it does point to the possibility of Bungie's next game existing in an adjacent space to games like Overwatch. We've been gradually learning very small amounts about Bungie's next game from the job adverts like this one. Previously we discovered that it could be, quote, something comedic with light-hearted and whimsical characters, end quote, as well as have RPG mechanics. Even though Bungie is so good at multiplayer games and is a huge Bungie and Destiny fan, I really would like Bungie to get back to a hardcore single-player action, story-focused game. That's what I want to see, but hopefully we see more of this project by the end of next year. Number 6. Grounded to get larger and slightly less frequent updates from now on. Wesley Inpool at Eurogamer writes, Grounded will get larger and slightly less frequent updates from now on, developer Obsidian has said. After a period of radio silence, the developer issued an update on its survival game which launched an early access form in July of last year. Quote, we are approaching the one year mark from the game preview early access launch and we still have so much that we want to do with the game, end quote, Obsidian said. Quote, some of these larger features take time and with a small team it's difficult to release content every month while balancing larger tasks that need to get done to finish the game. We'll be looking at doing larger and slightly less frequent updates moving forward which will allow us to make our updates more meaningful with more and better content. Our goal is to find the right balance of keeping the game fresh with new things while giving the team enough time to make quality features. As always, your feedback in the process is critical as we figure out a good release cadence as we continue the path towards 1.0 launch." End quote. Obsidian is currently working on Grounded's next update, 0.10.0, which is on track for launch at the end of June. Obsidian said it's decided not to release an update in May in order to focus on this June update, which the developer described as one of Grounded's biggest yet. Obsidian teased some new features coming with the June update including the ability to flip some building pieces to get their mirrored version, the addition of more curved walls and roof variations, and a change of giant food items so they can be found more frequently. Meanwhile, Obsidian has added sprinting while climbing up ladders and an upgrade to the latest version of the game's engine Unreal. See, I was one of those early fans of Grounded and I usually don't play these games. I was intrigued by the story what little they had in at the time, so I really want to see when they launch this game out of early access, give me that little single player story and a bite sized experience, and let me jump back in. And number 7, PUBG's creative director breaks down 2021's new 8x8 maps, Miramar Remaster, and Respawns. Adam Bankhurst at IGN writes, PUBG shared the first part of its 2021 dev plan revealing that this year we'll see a remaster of Miramar, the addition of Respawns, and two 8x8 maps, codenamed Tiger and codenamed Kiki. In an exclusive interview with IGN, PUBG creative director Dave Kurt explained how 2021 is building off PUBG's difficult but rewarding 2020, despite the pandemic and all the challenges that came along with it. 
PUBG was able to debut three new battlegrounds, Karakin, Paramount, and Haven, was also able to rework Vikendi and Sanuk and release both team deathmatch and ranked modes. Looking forward, Kurt says that Miramar is one of the early focuses for 2021, and while its updates are going to be more visual in nature, the team is also making changes that will make gameplay more exciting on PUBG's second ever map. There will be new weather sets for clear, overcast, sunrise, and sunset, the building interiors will also be relit to be more realistic, and terrain textures will be updated to give a better first impression. I just wanted to highlight the short piece of this news story, and there's plenty more to dig into if you're a PUBG fan. Go check it out, I am one of those that loved PUBG at first, just because it was a battle royale. I quickly grew to hate this game actually, and I can't stand playing it once more battle royales of the genre came out. It's just really too slow for me, and I hate the gunplay of the game. So those that enjoy PUBG, and there are millions and millions, keep enjoying it and check out the story for more. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and this one is about Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and it really is an unfun fact, as the loophole through EA Play has now been fixed. Credit to Tom West, the true achievements. Microsoft has closed the loophole that was allowing users to gain Xbox Game Pass Ultimate at a discounted rate by subscribing to EA Play. The news comes via the official Xbox's website, Xbox Game Pass Support FAQ. Previously, users were able to purchase a one-year EA Play plan for $30 and receive four months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which is half the price of buying four months alone. To remedy this, Microsoft has changed that four months to two months, which makes it an even price. While this is an unfun fact, I wanted to get the word out there on this. Hopefully many of you were able to take advantage of this deal, which I previously hinted at on the show. I myself, I think, racked up a year and a half through this deal, and I'm pretty sure I have Xbox Game Pass through 2024. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I've been in the process of moving yet again. So my recording situation and setup right now is a little mediocre, so hopefully the show still sounds good. I did squeeze in a little time to play Mass Effect Legendary Edition, and I'm still loving that game going through Mass Effect 1 and scanning and surveying all the planets first before continuing on with the main story. My name is Brian Rose, you can follow me on Xbox at Rose at 93. Hope you all have a great week, stay safe, and keep on gaming.